个特发性纤维化。它是一个看不见，有人说是隐形的杀手。那为什么叫隐形的杀手？我觉得很多人可能不知道，我们其实华人的肺哦，真的要稍微关心一下，因为可能空气啦，或者抽烟啦，或者各种问题，然后导致我们的肺的健康一直有很多的问题。今天我们有这么多的专家来帮助我们解决这个问题，所以我们首先哦，要邀请这位是哥伦比亚大学。临床助理教授，他除了是哥伦比亚大学，也是纽约长老会医院间质性肺病计划的副主任。他其实，在肺的病的部分呢，有非常多的研究。然后，我们现场就欢迎我们今天的主要演讲嘉宾。Let's welcome Dr. Nina p a t i n 他今天要为我们演讲的是间质性肺病。So thank you very much for all being here today, and uh, thank you to the organizers of the event and for, uh, to Baron Geringelheim for inviting me to speak. Ah, 谢谢大家今天的光临，也谢谢这个活动的主办方媒体集团和这个药厂 Baron Geringelheim 的赞助支持。Uh, so what I'd like to do over the next 30 to 45 minutes is introduce you to an unusual and complicated area of lung disease called interstitial lung diseases. 在下面的大概三十五分钟左右，我今天会给大家介绍一下呃一个不寻常的呃肺部疾病，叫间质性肺病。Uh, so interstitial lung diseases are sometimes also referred to as pulmonary fibrosis. So that's a term that you may have heard more commonly. Uh, 可能大家经常听到过叫肺纤维化。那一般呢，间质性肺病呢，一般呃、uh, 就叫做肺纤维化的疾病。So uh, as I mentioned, what we'll do over the next 30 to 40 minutes is discuss what interstitial lung diseases are, why people get them. How we diagnose them, and finally, we'll touch very briefly on how we treat them. 在下面的三十到四十分钟内呢，我们会给大家介绍一下间质性肺病，然后它的发病原因，我们怎么样诊断，以及会讲一下怎么样治疗这个疾病。So uh, before we begin with the disease state itself, it's useful to have an understanding of what normal in the lung looks like. So this is a diagram depicting a normal lung. 在我们讲这个疾病之前呢，我们就想看一下这个正常的肺是什么样的。Okay. So under normal circumstances, what happens is we all inhale oxygen through our mouths. It goes down past the windpipe, which is also called the trachea. Through all the branches of the windpipe, and eventually lands in the air sacs. 对一个正常的肺来说呢，你通过嘴呼进进呼吸进来的氧气会通过你的气管支气管，最后到达肺泡。So the air sacs are, are called alveoli, as you see right here, and they are covered in blood vessels. 啊、uh, ，大家看一下这个图中的右边呢，最后的肺泡的放大图，它实际上呢是被这个血管包围着。So in the setting of interstitial lung disease, the area of the lung that is affected is the lining of the air sacs. Ah, 实际上对于间质性肺病来说呢，它的那个肺泡是被在肺周围的这个组织影响的。And the lining of the air sacs is called the interstitium, and that's why the diseases are called interstitial lung disease. 啊、uh, ，在不同的肺泡之间呢，这个间质中的组织呢会被影响。那这就是为什么这个疾病被叫做间质性肺病。And the interstitium can be thickened either by inflammatory cells or by scar tissue, which is also called fibrosis. And that's why some people refer to these diseases as pulmonary fibrosis. 啊、uh, ，在不同肺泡之间的这个组织呢，可能会被影响，会变厚，所以呢，就把它叫叫做这个呃肺呃纤维化。
So to break this down a little further into more detail, the pictures you see are all here uh, diagrams of what's happening actually at a microscopic level in the lung. 这张图呢,大家看到的是在显微镜下的这个肺的这个截面图. So under normal circumstances, again, we breathe in oxygen. It travels through all the airways and eventually lands in these air sacs. And if we make a diagram showing one air sac with a blood vessel that passes by it, what normally happens is that oxygen is absorbed and then it travels into the blood vessel, to the heart, and out to the rest of your body. 在正常的条件下呢，就是你呼吸进来的氧气呢，会进到你的血管里。那通过这个血液的流通呢，它会把这个氧气带到心脏。So again, under normal circumstances, the blood that returns to the lungs is shown here as blue, and it picks up oxygen in the lungs, and it leaves the lungs red, fully saturated with oxygen. 啊，在正常的呢，我们看一下这个血管里的那个蓝色的，就是血液。当它跟氧气结合的时候呢，这个呃血液呢就会原吸收这个氧气，然后呢会把这个氧气送到你的心脏。So in the setting of interstitial lung disease, what you have then are either inflammatory cells or scar type tissue that thickens that barrier in between the air sac and the blood vessel. 如果你有肺纤维化的话,在你的肺泡和你的血管之间会有疤痕或者是损伤,这样的话你可能这个氧气就不能被全部吸收。And you can see visually here how it's more difficult for oxygen to get from the air sac to the blood vessel, so the transfer of oxygen becomes less efficient. Uh, now, under normal circumstances, these air sacs are almost like balloons. They expand very easily and they contract very easily. 在正常的一个肺的, so you can imagine how having the balloon surrounded by these cells and tissues could make it more difficult for that air sac to expand the way it normally should. 那如果是在有这个肺纤维化这种疾病的条件下，你就会看到，如果这个肺泡周围有这些损伤的话，这是对这个肺泡的自由收缩是很难的。So what this looks like under a microscope in the lungs is shown on this slide. Uh, so here we have normal, and what you can see is uh, an air sac where oxygen is inhaled, and it moves very easily into a blood vessel that's sitting right here in this very thin interstitium. 在左边是一个正常的肺泡，啊，那你也看到这个肺泡里的氧气，因为它边上的这个壁比较薄，所以这个氧气是很容易通过这个氧气壁来传输的。Now on the right, we have a lung biopsy from a patient who has interstitial lung disease, and you can see that this membrane is tremendously thickened, in this case by scar tissue. Uh, uh so uh so again to kind of drive home the idea of the abnormality in this type of lung disease, you can imagine how it's much more difficult for oxygen to get from this airspace into a blood vessel in the setting of fibrosis. 那对于这个肺纤维化病人的这个情况呢，就是你可以想象得到，从这个一个肺泡里边的氧气是多么难让它传输到它的血管里。So the two main results of having this problem in the lung um, are that the lung gets smaller over time, or the lung becomes restricted. 那对于这个肺纤维化病人的来说呢，因为它有这种肺的这个间质性的损伤，所以肺的呃就变得更小或者是被受限制。And that's because of what we discussed. It's like taking a helium balloon and encasing it in a thick rubber sac. So the literally the air sacs just can't expand the way they normally would. 
。那就像刚才医生讲的，实际上正常的肺呢，肺泡它像一个气球一样可以自由的收缩，但是如果肺受损伤的话，它就会像一个呃胶皮一样的一个球，所以它就很难去伸张。Uh, you also, in aggressive forms of interstitial lung disease, can get destruction of some of the air sacs, and the lungs can become smaller in that manner as well. Uh, so the second major abnormality is uh, the, uh, the decrement or the reduction in oxygen transfer that occurs. 那对于这个间质性肺病呢，还有一个现象就是它的氧气的传输的量减少。And both of these abnormalities can sometimes be very subtle or hard to detect in early stages when a person is at rest. 像这两种肺功能损伤呢，实际上对于早期的话呢，是很难检测出来的，尤其是在病人没有剧烈运动的条件下，很难检测出来。However, when somebody starts to exercise, and when I say exercise, that can be something as simple as walking up a couple of flights of stairs, we start to see the abnormality emerge, and、uh, it starts to show itself more dramatically. 但是，当我们有一些运动的话，比方说这个病人开始爬楼梯，爬几节楼梯的时候，他们一就可以观察到这种呃肺损伤的这个现象。And the reason for this is that in exercise. Everybody breathes more deeply, right?、Uh, and you also need more oxygen. Your body needs more oxygen and exercise. So, in the setting of this disease, the lungs, because they're restricted, cannot expand to accommodate, and they also can't、uh, exchange air efficiently enough for the body in its needs and exercise. 大家知道，当我们运动的时候，我们可能需要呼吸更多的氧气，然后我们的身体也需要更多的氧气。但是，当你的这个肺泡受损的时候呢，你就可能在运动的过程中呢，就吸收不了那么多的氧气，让你身体就会出现症状。So you may wonder,、uh, why are we talking about this disease, and also, why do people get this form of lung disease? 那你大家可能在座的会想，为什么我们今天来谈论这个疾病？然后到底是什么原因导致的这个疾病呢 ？So in terms of why we're talking about interstitial lung diseases, the truth is is that they're relatively rare compared to some other diseases like asthma or bronchitis or heart disease. 啊、uh, ，因为我们今天谈这个肺纤维化这种疾病，它相比较你的这个肺炎呐、啊，还有这个哮喘呐、啊、等等，它相对来说它的发病率不是很高，呃，不是那么高。However, because of all of the abnormalities that they cause that we've already talked about, they actually are the leading cause for lung transplantation in the United States. 嗯、um, ，但是呢，我们要今天谈论它，是因为它是导致的这个肺移植的最高的这样一种疾病。So they're rare diseases with a very high impact. 它是属于罕见病里边的影响力非常大的这样一种疾病。Now, in terms of why they happen,、uh, the truth is there are many, many different causes, and many of them have to do with a person's environment. Um, the 导致这个肺纤维化疾病的原因呢，它有很多原因，也跟你的这个生活的环境有很大的关系。And that can be something that they're exposed to in the workplace or even in the home. Um, 例如，比方说，在你工作的环境啊，或者是你家庭的环境里边，有一些物质的呃影响。So the most common forms of workplace-associated interstitial lung disease, or some of the more well-known forms, include coal miners' disease and asbestosis. Um, 比方说你工作的环境呢，比方说像有一些煤呀、啊、烧煤的这样的一种环境啊。However, there are many less common causes of work-related interstitial lung disease as well. Um, 那当然也有很多一些不不是很常见的，在你工作环境的影响的这种原因。Now there are also a number of exposures in the environment that have been associated with ILD. Um, 那还有呢，像环境的暴露影响。And two of the most common causes are、uh, excessive exposure to mold, as well as excessive exposure, such as perhaps having a pet like a bird, exposure to bird feathers. 
啊、uh, ，比方说像你的有霉菌的这样一个环境，或者是你家里养的那个宠物，或者是小鸟，呃、uh, ，都会导致这个影响。So most medications are safe for the lung, but many medications can have a side effect of causing lung injury or interstitial lung disease. 大多数我们吃的药物呢，一般对肺没有影响，但是有一些药物的话会造成你的肺损伤。A lot of research has shown us that there are familial or genetic、uh, mutations that predispose or cause interstitial lung disease. 还有呢，很多目前的研究表明，可能是家族的基因的遗传也会有这个影响。There are diseases called connective tissue disease or autoimmune disease, where the body actually attacks itself, including the lungs and sometimes other organs as well. That are a common cause of interstitial lung disease. 还有一种导致这种疾病的原因就是结缔组织疾病，就是你的自身免疫导致的你呃对这个肺的器官有一定的攻击性。And the truth is, in some cases, we look and look and look, and we really cannot figure out why somebody has interstitial lung disease. And in those cases, the disease is called idiopathic or unknown, of unknown cause. 还有一些情况下呢，就是我们并不知道发病的原因。那在这种情况下，我们就叫做特发性的肺纤维化疾病。So in terms of how all of these different、uh, causes that I just mentioned cause interstitial lung disease, there are three major steps.、Um, 对于呃， uh, 我们现在就看一下间质性肺病它发病的机制，呃、uh, ，大概分成三个步骤。Okay. So the first step is the injury itself. So here you see an air sac, and what happens in step one is that the air sac wall is、uh, ruptured or disrupted. Ah,、uh, 第一步呢，就是说这个我们看的是一个肺泡的示意图。那从这个图里，我们也看到它在这个肺泡壁上呢是被受损伤的。Now, what happens in step two is a wound healing response. Cells that help to repair the membrane. Are recruited to the space. Ah, 在第二步的话呢，我们看一下，实际上那个肺泡的壁受损伤以后呢，那它这个呃细胞自己呢就开始有修复的功能。But for reasons that are are not fully understood in the setting of fibrosis or interstitial lung disease, that wound healing response uh becomes too intense. 啊、uh, ，但是我们并不知道一些具体的发病原因。有些情况下，它的这个呃受伤的气泡的伤口呢，就变得反应的更加强烈。The the wound healing cells don't actually repair the wound, and instead they just continue to proliferate and grow in the interstitial space. 啊、uh, ，那在这种条件下呢，它就会继呃。Uh, 并不会完全修复这个伤口，但是它会变得继续增长，然后增长的这个组织呢，会扩散到你的这个肺泡之间的间隙部分。So now,、uh, I mentioned that interstitial lung diseases are, are as a whole, are relatively rare. 啊、uh, ，总体上呢，间质性肺病它算一个罕见的疾病。Uh, but again, of high impact. So if we look at the typical causes of interstitial lung disease,、uh, they're shown here on this diagram. Ah,、uh, 在这个图上我们可以看一下它的流行的趋势。Okay. So in all comers with interstitial lung disease, about 20% will have a particularly aggressive form called IPF, idiopathic pulmonary fibrosis. 大约大概有百分之二十呢，呃，是属于这个特发性的肺纤维化，是一个非常严重的疾病。And IPF、uh, tends to be one of the more aggressive forms of interstitial lung disease,、uh, is associated with progressive fibrosis or scarring in the lung. 啊、uh, ，它是一个发展很快的这么一个疾病，它和你的病，呃，和你肺泡间质中的这个斑疤痕有关系。Now, hypersensitivity pneumonitis accounts for also 20% of cases, and this is an environmental form of interstitial lung disease. It's caused by things that people are inhaling in their home or possibly their work environments. 
呃，还有百分之二十是属于慢性的过敏性肺炎。那它呢，主要的发病是受环境的影响，比方说你在工作环境或家庭环境吸入一些的物质，对肺造成的这种疾病。About twenty percent of cases of interstitial lung disease are due to autoimmune disorders such as lupus or rheumatoid arthritis. 嗯、um, ，还有大概百分之二十的肺间质性疾病是因为你自身的免疫造成的，比方说像你有这种呃、uh, arthritis 这种疾病啊，会导致这个间质性的肺病。About twenty percent of cases are due to a disease called sarcoidosis that can affect many organs in the body. It causes clusters of inflammatory cells called granulomas to develop in the lungs. 那还有大概百分之二十是结呃结节病，它这种病呢会影响身体的很多的器官。About ten percent of cases of interstitial lung disease are caused by what are called pneumoconioses. These are disorders caused by inhalation of metal or mineral dust. 啊、uh, ，还有呢，是因为这个金属啊，或者是一些矿物质的这个灰尘导致的叫尘肺这种疾病，大概占百分之十。And、uh, finally, there are 10%、uh, due to many, many other、uh, diseases. 还有大概百分之十呢，是因为其他的原因导致的。Now I mentioned that IPF is again one of the most common forms of interstitial lung disease, and it's also one of the most common forms in the elderly. 刚才医生讲到这个 IPF 特发性肺炎纤维化呢，是一个呃很严重的疾病。那同时呢，它又在老年人中发病率很高。So the incidence and prevalence rates of IPF rise in the aging population. 啊，尤其在老年人中呢，它的这个发病率在逐年的在增加。And you can see that depicted on this graph here on the right. Where once you look at people over the age of 60, again the rates across several different studies of IPF increase dramatically. 那从这张图大家可以看出来，一旦你的年龄超过六十岁以后呢，随着年龄的增长，这个特发性肺纤维化的发病率就越来越高。So it, for myself as a pulmonary doctor, if I'm seeing a patient who's 20, I'm not very worried about IPF. If I'm seeing somebody who's 70, I'm much more worried about this disease. 医生是一个肺专科的专家。那对于他来说，如果看一个病人大概二十几岁，他他不会怀疑他有肺纤维化。但是如果对一个病人是超过呃大概七十岁的话，他一定会想到这种疾病。And again, part of the reason we focus so much on IPF in the pulmonary world and in interstitial lung disease is because the survival rates associated with this disease, unfortunately, are not very good. Ah,、uh, 还有另外一点，我们今天来讲特发性肺纤维化这个疾病呢，是因为它的存活率是很低的。You can see that the five-year survival rate associated with IPF is actually poorer than that. Of most common cancers. From this graph, you can see that for the five-year survival rate of five years, the survival rate is lower than that of other diseases. So, moving on, then, we've discussed that interstitial lung disease refers to a group of diseases, and there are actually over a hundred of them. 大概有啊， uh, 因为我们刚才医生讲了，大概对于间质性肺病的话，大概有上百种。So when I, as a pulmonary doctor or any of your doctors, diagnose a person with interstitial lung disease, our work isn't done. The next job then is to decide what type of ILD does my patient have. 那对于一个肺专家来说呢，肺专科医生来说，当他发现你有这种间质性肺病的话，那下一步就要看他到底属于哪一种。And the reason for that, as we've already talked about, and we'll come back to again, is because the type of ILD very much affects how the disease will behave over time, and what kind of treatment options we may have for the disease. 那为什么要决定它属于哪一种呢？因为你在确定了它的种类之后呢，你就可以知道到底是怎么来治疗这种疾病。So there are four major categories of ILD according to the American Thoracic Society. 在这个间质性肺病里边呢，主要有四种大的类型。There are、uh, rare causes, 
uh, the idiopathic interstitial pneumonias, which are a group of disorders for which we don't know why they occur. Uh, uh, there are granulomatous diseases, uh, of which sarcoidosis is the most common. Uh, 然后呢, and finally, there are the known cause-related group, which is a large group of interstitial lung diseases for which we can identify what triggered the problem, and hopefully that means we can modify whatever caused the problem or remove it. Uh, or in some cases treat it if it's due to an autoimmune disease. 那还有呢, 如果是因为它有你自身免疫力的问题呢, so the idiopathic interstitial pneumonias, as I mentioned, are several different diseases. The major point on this slide is that IPF, which we've already talked about, is the most common of the idiopathic interstitial pneumonias. 那像刚才医生讲到的呢, 特发性尖指性肺炎呢, 有几种, and we've already touched on this point, but again, the reason that pulmonary doctors really spend quite a lot of time making sure we identify what type of ILD a patient has is because as you can see here, looking at survival over time, people with IPF have much poorer five and 10 year survival than those with other forms of interstitial lung disease. 那当时呢，我刚才医生讲到的这种疾病的话呢，我们就可以看到这种呃特发性肺纤维化这种疾病呢，它的存活率是很低的，尤其大概五到十九年的时间内呢，它和其他的肺病相比，它的生存率非常低
。对于这个间质性肺病的话呢，因为他们并它并不是一个常见的疾病，所以很多情况下这种呃间质性疾病的这个病人经常会被误诊成这个哮喘或者是心脏的心脏病。So uh, for you as the patients and for us as the physician, if you're getting treated and you're not getting better and you're not getting better, it does make sense to start to think outside of the box. Am I missing something? Could we have the wrong diagnosis? If you're getting treated and you uh, in some occasions, if a patient does have an autoimmune disorder, they may have more dramatic symptoms such as fevers, rashes, joint pains, muscle weakness, and aches. Um, 但对一些病人，有一些病人来说，他确实有很明显的症状，比方说像发烧啊、体重减轻啊等等这种身体上的反应。So, as the physician, if I'm suspecting interstitial lung disease. Uh, it's my job to make sure I take a very good history, uh, and it's your job as the patient to give all the facts to your doctor so that we can try to see if there are any clues for why you may have this problem in the lungs. 对于一个肺专家医生，像我们医生这样呢，如果他怀疑一个病人有这个间质性肺病的话呢，他会嗯、um, 去研究你的家族的这个病史。那对于一个病人来说也是很重要，你应该有义务去告诉医生你所有的关于自己以往疾病的病史。So, uh, so as already discussed. One of the first things we do is take a very good history about what the patient is being exposed to at their workplace and again in their home environment. 比方说，像你在工作或者是家庭的呃这个环境里边有没有一些影响因素 ？Well, they ask you all kinds of really odd questions like, "Do you have pets? Do you use a humidifier? Do you use hot tubs?" And we just ask you to be as honest as you can. 那医生还会问你很多的问题，比方说你是不是家里有宠物啊？你是不是用加湿器呀、啊？等等。We're not making any judgments, just trying to get to the bottom of things. Um, 医生并不会去做一些判断，就是想了解更多的影响因素。We'll ask people if they smoke. Smoking has been associated with numerous forms of interstitial lung disease. 呃、uh, ，问他，医生会问病人是不是他们吸烟呢？因为吸烟是跟很多的肺病发病都相关的。Similarly, uh, other drugs that are more dangerous, like cocaine and heroin, have also been associated with ILD. 也还有一些药物的使用啊。Okay, uh, we know, as I mentioned, that there are familial forms of lung fibrosis. So if one or more immediate family members have been affected, it really raises our concern that maybe this is a familial form of ILD. 那还有就是家族病史。如果你曾经有一个家族中的一员得过这种疾病的话，那有很大的这个影响因素。And you can see here on the right the names of a number of mutations that have been associated with either a predisposition to or a causal role in ILD. 那在右边的这个图上，大家可以看到有很多的因素导致或者是影响你可能会有这种间质性肺病的呃发病情况。Uh, again, having an up-to-date medication list is very important for the physician since a number of meds have been associated with ILD. 还有你吃的药啊，在你去看医生的时候，你要把你所有的吃的药的这个列表给医生看，因为很多药物呢会导致你的肺的损伤。Uh, on our physical exam, we're looking to see whether somebody has a low oxygen level, either at rest or perhaps with exercise, with walking around the ward. 还有一些重要的这个表征呢，就是比方说你在休息或者你在运动的时候呢，可能你的氧气的呃量呢会比较低。On the lung exam, there's a specific finding called Velcro-like crackles. It literally sounds like opening and closing Velcro. That we hear uh, in people with interstitial lung disease. 那还有像如果有这种特发性肺纤维化疾病的人，他有时候他的肺部会有那种声音，就像我们的那个呃魔术贴一样的撕开的那种声音。Some people will have strain on their heart as a result of having the lung disease. So on the heart exam, we're looking for extra sounds that might be an indication that that has happened. 
，或者是进行超声波检查，看看他们的肺部有没有什么杂音。And on the rest of the exam, the skin exam and the joint exam, we're looking for any signs of an autoimmune problem because autoimmune problems can often cause rashes and joint abnormalities. 那还有一些检查就是说看你的自身的免疫，那自身的免疫的下降也会导致一些这个肺纤维化它的疾病的症状。Uh, in our blood testing, we tend to send a lot of blood tests, and part of the reason for that is that many autoimmune disorders can be screened for, not necessarily diagnosed, but screened for with blood tests. 还有呢，医生可能会让你去做血液检查，因为很多自身免疫导致的这种疾病呢，可以通过血液检查呢检查出来。And as I mentioned, in people who have had multiple family members affected with ILD, we can consider doing genetic testing in some cases. 那还有呢，就是对于一些家族有病史的呢，可以通过一些做一基因检测来检测出来。So again, when we're suspecting interstitial lung diseases, there are a number of tests that we do, and some of the most important are pulmonary function studies and something called a six-minute walk test. 那还有一个最常用的医生来检测呢，就是叫肺功能测试和六分钟行走。So pulmonary function studies, which some of you in the audience may have done if you have a lung problem,、uh, do a couple of things. You blow into a tube, as you see in this diagram, and we measure the lung capacity as one of the major things that we do. 那我们在做的呢，可能有人做过这种肺功能测试，就是你。通过一个管子呼气，然后通过这个检测仪器，你可以看一下你的肺活量。And as I had mentioned earlier, the lungs become smaller over time in people with lung fibrosis, so we can measure the total lung capacity or something called the force vital capacity, and we can follow that over time to understand how significant the disease is and whether it's progressing. 对于有肺纤维化病人来说呢，刚才像医生讲，他的肺会变小，那这样的话，医生会长期的监测你的这个肺活量，然后看一下到底你这个疾病是怎么样的这个恶化的。Uh, one of the other major measures that we get from a pulmonary function test is a measure of how well the lungs absorb oxygen or the efficiency of oxygen absorption, and that's called the diffusing capacity. 呃、uh, ，还有一个呃、uh, 重要的就是测量血液中的氧气的含量。We also tend to do a simple exercise test at our initial evaluation and at many other visits. It's called a six-minute walk test. 那还有一个呢，就叫六分钟行走测试。它是一个挺比较简单的一个测试。那这样的话，可以看看这个你的疾病情况。And for you as the patient, if we're treating you perhaps with the medication. We use it to help us understand what was your number before you started medication, and then what's your number now, six months into the medication. Are things getting better? Are they staying the same? Are they getting worse? 那对于像病人的话，接受药物治疗的话呢，他就会在使用药物前进行测试，然后在药物进行的过程中呢，再测试。And sometimes at the initial visit, we'll also do a test called an echocardiogram, which is an ultrasound of the heart, and that's again to assess whether、uh, the heart has come under strain as a result of the lung disease. 那还有呢，就是做这个超声心心电图的测试。那通过这个测试以后呢，就可以看到这个肺病到底对你的心脏有多大的影响。Now,、uh, all of the tests I've mentioned up to now, and the exam and the history, are supportive of、uh, help in supporting our diagnosis of ILD. But we always need to get pictures of the lungs to confirm this diagnosis. Um, 那还有呢，我们就对呃肺的诊断呢，还有这个常用的这个其他的这一些检测来确定到底是什么样的情况。So a chest X-ray is a very basic picture of the lung. It's a starting point, but we always need something called high-resolution chest CT scan in people with ILD. 对于胸部 X 光检查来说，它是一个非常常用的一个检测方式。但是呢，一般在医生诊断的时候，一般都会找一些高精度的测试，像这个 CT 扫描。And a high-resolution chest CT is a very specific type of CAT scan that gives us very detailed views of the lungs. 啊、uh, ，对于这个高分辨率呃率的这个胸部的 CT 扫描，它会给一个非常高精度的肺部的这个呃影像。
So here we have some examples. Um, this is a chest X-ray of a normal individual. So this is the heart right here, and then these are the lungs, and they're well expanded, and there are no major abnormalities in this person. Uh, so now on the right, you see a person with interstitial lung disease, and you may be able to appreciate that the lungs just look smaller than they do on the person on the left. You may also be able to appreciate that there's a haziness or an increased whiteness over the lungs and even some increased lines throughout the lung fields. So if we see an X-ray like this, it makes us think now we need to get a CAT scan. 如果是说在胸部X光像这样的话呢,医生就会给你进一步做这种高精度的CT扫描。so uh, a CT scan uh, involves taking images of the lungs that give us thin slices or thin views of cross sections of the lung. Uh, so this is one uh, typical example of a CAT scan view in a patient with normal lungs. And on the right, you can see somebody with interstitial lung disease, and you can see that they look very different. Uh, so you can see that the edges of the lung in this normal individual are very clear. They're black. Uh, and in the person with interstitial lung disease, you can see that there are all these extra white lines out at the edge of the lung. Uh, uh, so some forms of interstitial lung disease, not many, but IPF in particular, can be diagnosed just based on the history in the CAT scan alone, without doing a biopsy. Uh, so if a patient has a compatible history and their CAT scan shows something called a UIP pattern that has the features that are listed on this slide, a diagnosis of IPF can be made without performing any additional testing. Uh, and those features include where the abnormality is, the quality of the abnormality, is it extra lines in the lungs, is it extra haziness, is it extra dots in the lungs. All of those features help the lung doctor and the radiologist decide uh, what the last two or three possibilities may be in the diagnosis. And to kind of uh, highlight that point, here I have four different CAT scan images. Three of them are from patients I've seen in the office. And you can see how the quality of the abnormality is completely different in all four of these images. Uh, 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 and these patients had four different diagnoses corresponding with their four different CAT scan abnormalities. Uh, so this person who had extra lines in the lung and this finding called honeycombing that looks like a bee's honeycomb had IPF. Mm -hmm. 
This person with a lot of extra dots in the lungs had an environmental form of lung disease called hypersensitivity pneumonitis. 这个就是那个过慢性的敏感性的这个肺炎 This person has, uh, you may appreciate, increased grayness of the lung. That's called a ground glass abnormality. And this person had something called NSIP. Uh, and this person, it may not be projecting well, has a lot of extra holes or cysts in the lung, and they had a form of smoking-related lung disease. So the CAT scan helps us tremendously, but very often we'll still need more information in the form of lung tissue. Uh, now, uh, we like to obtain the lung tissue in the least invasive way possible, but unfortunately, bronchoscopy, which is the least invasive way possible, only gives us a diagnosis 20 to 30 percent of the time. 还有一种呢，因为医生可能用多角度来确定疾病。那还有一种就是支气管镜的检查，但是支气管镜它给出来的检测的成功率大概也就百分之二十到三十。Bronchoscopy is a procedure that you can come in and go home the same day. It involves putting a long, flexible tube about this long down someone's nose, and you can actually put this uh, probe through the tube to take biopsies. Uh, There's an enhanced form of bronchoscopy called cryobiopsy, which involves putting the probe through the bronchoscope and then applying intense cold temperature to the lung and then pulling the whole thing out. 还有一种呢，叫冷冻肺活检，它就是比这个普通的这个支气管镜的检测呢，可能更嗯更加加了一层东西，就是增加了它的温度，然后把这个有温度控制的管子进到你的肺里边取出这个呃活检组织。and this almost triples the knee, uh, the yield uh, in terms of diagnosis of traditional bronchoscopy. So it's performed very frequently in Europe in particular. However, it is associated with fairly high rates of bleeding and fairly high rates of lung puncture, which is part of the reason that we don't perform it routinely here at our center um, or necessarily across the U.S. Uh, so the current guidelines by the American Thoracic Society suggest that if your CAT scan is not showing an IPF pattern, then you should do a surgical lung biopsy, which is an operation. Uh, uh, and after surgical lung biopsy, something called MDD is performed, and what that really is is a meeting where the pulmonary doctor, the radiologist who's reading the CAT scans, and the pathologist who reads the biopsy all meet together and discuss the patient's information and come to a consensus on the diagnosis. And that's been shown to be the most effective way to make a diagnosis of ILD. 目前呢，这个是一个针对特发性肺纤维化检测最有效的这么一个检测方法。So uh, in sum, to make uh, an adequate diagnosis of ILD is complicated, and you have to put together a lot of pieces of the puzzle to get to the final diagnosis. 
。那针对于这个特发性肺纤维化，它的检测是很复杂的，你要经过不同的专科的这个合作或者是检测，才能最后有一个确诊。So once we've made a diagnosis of interstitial lung disease, we want to monitor our patients, and there are a few ways we do that. Ah, when we have done the test, we have to monitor the patient and the patient. There is a statistical There is a statistical model called the GAP model, which involves taking the patient's type of interstitial disease, their gender, their age, and then their pulmonary function test results. And using those to calculate a score that helps us decide how the disease will behave over the next three years. Um, 那其中有一个监测呢，就叫着一个 GAP 模型，它会拿到病人的年龄啊，他目前的这个情况啊，然后他这个得了这个疾病以后，他的这个肺活量的检测历史啊。那通过这些的数据呢，他来预测下三年以后这个病人的情况。And as we've already touched upon, we follow lung function tests, the six-minute walk test, sometimes exercise tests, and even sometimes questionnaires that measure how short of breath someone is over time to monitor the disease. 那像在如果确诊了以后，他会监测病人的六分钟行走啊、肺功能测试啊，还有这个呼吸的情况啊，来跟踪病人的情况。And that's uh, summarized on this slide right here. 这个就是刚才医生谈到的，然后给大家总结一下，到底怎么样去监测一个呃特发性肺纤维化化病人的情况。So uh, now we'll move on to very briefly discuss an approach to treatment. 下面我们会简单的讲一下治疗。And so, uh, to keep things pretty simple, really what it comes down to is how much inflammation is in the lung and how much scarring is in the lung. Um, and generally, the interstitial lung diseases that are more inflammatory tend to have a better response to medication than diseases that are more fibrotic. 那对于这个肺纤维化的病人来说，如果他是现在处于发炎的症状的条件下呢，他对这个药物的反应会比如果你已经变成纤维化了呢，它更更有效。The inflammatory forms of interstitial lung disease tend to be treated with medicines that target inflammation and immune cells. 啊，对于这个有发炎状况的话呢，当他吃药的时候呢，他可能会呃，主要是针对他的肺的炎症啊，还有呢，他的这个免疫系统的这个细胞的这个增强它的功能啊来考虑。For diseases that tend to be more fibrotic, some of some of the patients, those who have IPF, can receive antifibrotic medications that have been shown to slow the progression of the disease. 啊，对于肺纤维化的病人来说呢，他们会吃一种药。那这样药呢，可以帮助减缓你的这个肺的功能的这个恶化。Uh, unfortunately, these medicines don't completely stop the progression of the disease. So if somebody has a very fibrotic form of ILD, we often will think about lung transplant if they're an otherwise healthy person. Um, 呃，对于这个肺纤维化病人来说呢，目前的药物呢，呃，很不幸的是，它并不能够停止你的肺功能的恶化。那如果对于一些很严重的病人来说，他们医生会考虑做这个肺移植。So there are a number of other treatments that we use that help the patient. They may not necessarily change the rate of the disease progression, but they are common sense measures that tend to make people feel better and keep them healthier. 啊、uh, ，那这这里边列到的就是医生现在常用的治疗方法。那它并不能够呃彻底的停止你的这个病情的恶化，但是呢，它能够让病人呢提高他的生活质量。So for patients who have low oxygen levels, either at rest or with walking, we can prescribe home oxygen that can sometimes help make the breathing easier and prevent dangerous low oxygen episodes. 如果病人呢，他的血液里边氧浓度低的话呢，医生会给他们开氧气。那这样的话呢，让他们呼吸更容易一些。In all of our patients, we recommend something called pulmonary rehabilitation. It's an eight to twelve week long exercise program that focuses on strengthening the muscles that help breathing. 
，呃，还有一种呢叫肺康复的这种治疗，那主要是说呢，让病人做一些他能够做的这种训练，让这个在肺泡周围的肌肉变得更强劲一些，这样可以帮助你呼吸。We always recommend obtaining vaccines for pneumonia and flu so that we can prevent anything that is preventable. 那医生们们一般常常经常会推荐大家打这个肺炎和流感疫苗。And we always recommend treating any other pulmonary conditions that are present so that we can improve lung health. 啊，还有呢，医生会建议你治疗现在相关的其他你有的肺部疾病，然后能能够帮助你增强肺的功能。Uh, we touched upon the idea that the medication that is prescribed depends very much on the type of interstitial lung disease that we're dealing with. 那刚才医生也讲了药物的治疗，它是实际上采用什么样的药物，跟你到底是属于哪一种类型的这个间质性肺病有很大的关系。So the point being that uh, not every patient with ILD will be treated with the same medication. Each person is individual. Yeah, 针对于不同的病人，他可能会使用不同的药物，并不是说所有的病人都用一种药物去治疗。Some people will be candidates for research trials, which are looking at new therapies that are not yet proven uh, for lung fibrosis. 那在现在大家知道有很多是做这个临床实验的，他们是找新的病人，主要是实验一些新的治疗的药物。那这个也是一种选择。And finally, people who are pretty healthy otherwise, who don't have a lot of medical problems and are reasonably fit, may be candidates for lung transplantation. 对于那些有肺纤维化病人来说，如果他的身体其他的症呃健康状况都蛮好的话呢，医生可能会推荐做这个肺移植。So uh, that is the end of uh, my slides.